Welcome to Slipper Rock NYC's animation podcast using After Effects for character animation. I'm your host, Rob Powers. This is episode three. Today we're going to be dealing with uh, using time remap in After Effects for setting up a lip sync comp, which will help increase your speed in animation. Okay, so we're going to import our elements that we've created in uh, episode two from Photoshop. So here are the character animation elements. We should import them using import file. Go to bare sample. When you want to import this, you want to import all the layers as separate layers. Also you want to make sure that all the layers are cropped layers, which means the bounding box that's around each layer is only going to be the size of the layer itself. Click import. Let's double click into the comp here. As you can see, here are all our elements. Uh, make sure that your comp is set at 23976, or if you're working for uh, for television, uh, 2997. Um, you want to make sure that every comp is at the same frame rate, or you be, you, ha you run into issues of uh, your frames not being on frames, your keyframes not being on keyframes or on frames. Um, so we're only going to be dealing with these first eight layers. Uh, so highlight the first eight layers. These um, are named for what they sound like. So this is a B and M P sound. This is in between. Um, that helps smooth out uh, large mouth movements to smaller mouth movements. So like say it goes from a closed mouth to an ah mouth, but he says it's slow. It'll just smooth out the animation. Here's an E and an S sound, an ah, an O, an U, an R, C, H sound. These are pretty much what you're going to need. Um, you can create more specific mouths or special mouths for different expressions for the character, which will help later on, but right now we're just going to stay with the standard 8 or 10, depending on how many you want. Okay, so highlight all your layers and go to Layer Precompose. And this is going to compose all your uh, mouths into one comp. And for people in Flash, it's called a symbol. Here we go. We should name it Mouth. Uh, it's a good idea to name your comps and elements pretty clearly because once you start creating these characters get more and more complex and it's just easier to see if it's been labeled correctly you can tell it's just a mouth so let's hold down option and double click in and as you can see here are all my layers now we don't want all the layers to last the whole entire length of the the timeline here otherwise you can't really see the other mouse behind it so if you can click all of the elements hold down option and hit right bracket or close bracket you'll see, if I zoom in here, that everything is now down to one frame. This is exactly what we want. The next step to do is um, set them out in a staircase fashion so that frame one is just one, frame two is just another mouth, frame three is another mouth, frame four is another mouth, frame five is another mouth, so on and so forth. And you can do that by hand or you can highlight all of them and go to animation, keyframe assistant, sequence layers. You don't want overlap, you want to leave it default settings like this and as you see it staircases them out. Now as you can see I have too much time on this timeline there's no really no no need to have it that long so I'm gonna crop down the timeline if you hit N it crops down your workspace here and then if you control click or right click you can trim your work area to trim your timeline to your work area like so. So now if I hit spacebar you can see that the mouse will play in order See that? Now if we go back out, and let's just highlight just this guy, you can see that it's way too short now. And you say that the, the scene seems to be, you know, 15, 17 seconds long here. Now the mouths are going to just disappear at that point. This is where time wrap comes in. So if your mouth is highlighted, go to layer and go to time. Enable timer mapping. So what timer mapping does is gives you the ability to keyframe each frame throughout time. So you can stretch stuff or slow stuff down. Right now, we're going to use it to help us choose which frame we want at what time. We delete the last keyframe here, and now we want to change this to hold. If you hold down Option Command H, that will change it to a hold. Or you could, could go down to um, Keyframe Interpolation and change it to hold here. It's just faster with Option Command H or Option Apple H, depending on what keyboard you have for Mac. And I think it's Alt for PC, so Option Alt H. We're running into the issue where our bounding box is the size of this 
um, project, which will be frustrating to you know select arms and things if the mouth is above everything else. It'll be nearly impossible to select what you want. So we're going to quickly take a picture of this so that we know what the layout is. If we want to see what it was, click this little guy to see what the picture, last picture was. And we're going to go into this mouth here, so it's option double click, and we're going to crop it down to what we need. As you can see, we don't need all this extra space here, it's just dead space. You use your um, region of interest tool here, click on it, and just drag around the mouth here like that. It's the only area we really need to use. So let's go down to composition, crop comp to region of interest, which is going to crop this comp to that size. Let's click that. The composition is a lot smaller. And as you can see, it has moved from where it was originally. So now let's reposition it. So highlight the layer and zoom in a little bit and use your arrow keys. If you hold down shift and up, it'll move your element up to where it should be. Now let's move it over a little bit. Now shift moves things 10 pixels and just without shift it moves it one pixel. So we're gonna not hold down shift and just push up until we get it to about where we want. You can zoom in a little bit more to get a little bit more accurate. And as you can see it doesn't move so that means it's exactly where it used to be. So now we have timer map. So like if I want to go to let's say five seconds in and choose frame one and then we go two frames over and maybe change, choose frame five uh, you know you can go on so on and so forth that's a little slow clicking and, and typing it in every time so I'm gonna give you an expression um, that will express this timer map to a null and you can use your hotkeys of the uh, plus and minus on your your uh, number pad on your right of your keyboard that gives you the ability to do rotation um, if I rotate the mouth now you'll see if I hit plus and minus it rotates the mouth a little bit uh, so we can make a null that rotates that will drive the timer map keyframe so let's create a new layer so if we go to new and then we go to null object you can also make it a solid but a null object doesn't actually render so it's you won't forget to turn off the solid uh, before rendering so it's just it, it um, it's one less step really so let's take this null and move it out of the way we can scale it down the scale doesn't really matter um, but if we set up our nulls at the top here it'll be out of the way of the character animation so it'll be easy to animate the character and then easy to select the nulls that are up here that drive those certain things we're gonna change the name of the null so we hit return we're going to call it a uh, mouth select. And we're going to show the rotation. Hit R for rotation. And we're going to set a keyframe and change it to hold Option Command H or Option Alt H. And as you can see, you know, this is set to zero, this is set to zero. So it should be pretty easy. If we hold down Option, and if you hold down Option, it gives you uh, the ability to type in an expression. We're going to choose the pick whip because we don't need to type anything in at the moment. And it gives us, gives us the uh, expression uh, script for that, that parenting right there. As you can see, if I rotate one degree, it moves eight frames. That's not really what we want. We want this 